Today, I'm gonna to compare the $150 Topping E30 V2 DAC against its bigger brother, the $200 Topping E50 DAC, in order to help you decide which one you should buy and to try to answer the always challenging question, do DACs within $50 of each other really sound that different? I love that question. Make sure you stick around because after listening to both of these DACs, the answer to that question really surprised me. I don't know if you do this when you're shopping for gear, but oftentimes when I find an item to buy, I will actually look at one model higher to see if I can get any extra features for a little bit of extra money. And since both of these DACs are only within $50 of each other, I bet a lot of people have looked at both and had a hard time deciding if they should spend extra money on the E50 or just sticking with the E30 is fine. Full disclosure, Apos Audio is loaning me the E50 DAC for review, and I thought it would make a great comparison against this little brother, the E30, so I went out and bought the most recent version of that DAC, which is technically the E30 V2, but for the sake of my sanity and probably yours, I'm going to simply refer to it as the E30 throughout this video. Now, Apos Audio didn't have any opinions in what I say in this video, nor am I being compensated for this review. I simply used it as a great reason to go and buy myself another DAC. Let's first talk about how these two DACs are similar. They both can be used not only as DACs, but also as preamps. Therefore, they both come with remote controls. While they both can use as preamps, neither DAC comes with built-in Bluetooth or streaming capabilities. Now, both DACs handle the same inputs, coax, USB, and optical. They both have a DC input for power. However, Topping does not include a wall wart with either DAC. I've read where people have improved their performance by upgrading these power supplies, but I did not have the capability to do so for this video. But please let me know in the comments if you've upgraded the power supply, which one you bought, and how it impacted the performance of the DAC, if at all. Both of these DACs use a similar touchscreen menu mode function that, to be honest, took me a while to figure out. So you kind of have to be patient, but I eventually got the hang of it. Now, both DACs have filter options to change the sound signatures, but I'll be very honest with you, I couldn't really tell the difference between using filters on either of these DACs and could hear that much of a sound difference. So I just used the default filter while listening to both of these for this video. Now, when it comes to how these DACs differ, the most obvious difference is size. With the E50 being bigger, thanks to the fact that it has two sets of outputs, RCA and TRS, while the E30 has only one set of RCA outputs. The TRS outputs on the E50 are balanced, but if you have a regular set of XLR cables lying around, you'll need to invest in adapters or simply buy another set of cables. I bought two pairs of TRS cables off Amazon for $20 total, so I could pair the E50 with the L50 amplifier, which will be viewed separately in a future video. Let's talk DAC chips. This upgraded version of the E30 actually has a pair of chips, one for each channel. The AK44935S, which is dubbed as having a velvet sound, which unfortunately only reminds me of Bobby Vinton. What a dated joke. Meanwhile, the E50 uses the ES9068AS Sabre chip. I am not an MQA user, but if you are, the E50 can process MQA files while the E30 cannot. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the E30 is priced at $150 while the E50 comes in at $200. So now the big question. Is there enough of a sound difference between the two DACs to spend more money on the E50? For my listening test, I connected both DACs to Topping's L50 headphone amp, which was powering my Sennheiser HD 560S headphones. It's important to note that I used the USB input as the source while listening to Tidal via my MacBook Pro, and both DACs were connected to the amp via RCA since that was the common output between the two. Again, I didn't use any filters when comparing either DAC. They always had the same default filter. 
I don't have the ability to take measurements, so you'll have to live with my subjective opinion on what, if anything, I heard in terms of sound differences between these two DACs. And keep in mind that your experience will vary based on how you use these two DACs in your system, whether it be with headphones like I did, or if you put it into a traditional stereo setup. And also remember, if you were to put this in a headphone setup like I used, the pair of headphones that you use would also greatly vary in the sound differences that you may hear. But if you're someone that is a big fan of measurements, both of these DACs got very positive rave reviews on Audio Science Review. So be sure to go check that out if you're interested in learning more about how these measured. Now, most importantly, with both of these DACs, I found them to have very quiet noise floors. I could not hear any distortion or humming or noises of any kind while listening to music with either DAC. So the good news is you don't have to worry about those qualities of the DACs when trying to decide between each one. I was surprised at what I heard when comparing the sound of each DAC. My experience with DACs is that they often pick out certain instrumentation and highlight them in ways I've never heard before, or they present vocals in a unique way. However, when listening to both of these DACs, I found that they actually handled this job in a very similar way. For me, the main difference came down to one word, and that is soundstage. Wait, is soundstage one word or two words? Overall, the E50 has a wider and larger soundstage. For instance, when I was listening to the song My Wave by Soundgarden, the E30 seemed to take the drums and vocals and present them more forward. It was almost like I could hear them right here in like front of my forehead while the E50 did a better job of sort of bringing that around to both ears and just sort of immerse me in the music. I actually kind of felt like I was in the middle of the song. While listening to Kendrick Lamar, it was the same experience. The E30 kept the vocals more out here in front of me, while the E50 brought them back around me in that bigger, wider sound stage. Now, I thought maybe this was just something to do with vocals or drums, so I listened to an instrumental guitar album, which is Aerial Boundaries by Michael Hedges. And again, the E50 just surrounded me with this music. There were even parts where it sounded like it, I could hear music behind me, while the E30 just always kept the music right out here in front. Even though it may sound like I'm saying the E50 is a better DAC, I actually think the sound signatures are so close that a lot of people would have trouble finding too many distinct differences between the two, especially when listening with headphones. And for me, that means that if you already own the E30, I don't know that it's really worth the extra $50 to upgrade to the E50 unless you want added features like balanced outputs and MQA. Again, if you are shopping between the two DACs and trying to make a decision, I would rely more on the added features I mentioned above in your decision over just pure sound performance. The topping E30 is still a great sounding DAC for the money. However, if you're looking for balanced outputs and don't mind spending a little more, the E50 will be a great decision as well. In short, you really can't go wrong with either of these DACs you decide to buy. I had a lot of fun comparing both of these DACs, but these aren't the first topping DACs that I've had the pleasure of reviewing. If you'd be interested in finding out about how you could spend even more money on a great sounding and performing topping DAC that comes with Bluetooth, you could do so by watching this video here.